Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So if you're like me and you ride a Honda Africa Twin or any other adventure bike that has a header pipe that runs along the side of the bike, you notice that sometimes you kind of end up with a, a, a hot foot. And it's even worse if you have an aftermarket header like this uh, Acropovic exhaust system here. There's no um, cat or anything like that and this straight pipe will eventually get pretty hot, especially at slow speeds where there's no air going over it to cool it off and you end up in the, at the end of the day with a kind of a soggy right foot from your foot sweating so much. Um, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it with this titanium exhaust wrap and it should really help the heat transfer and keep all the heat kind of in and going out the exhaust instead of coming out of the pipe and into your foot. So stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. All right, so with this exhaust wrap, it is a fairly inexpensive exhaust wrap off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description down below, but it's a titanium insulation. It's got titanium fibers in it, and um, they also make it in, in fiberglass. Both are about the same. There isn't really any performance one over the other. Uh, the fiberglass insulation is just kind of a pain to work with because it does get a lot of like fiberglass fibers in your hands. So I definitely recommend no matter what wearing gloves uh, to help that out. This stuff does it a little bit, but it's not near as bad as the um, fiberglass stuff. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're gonna soak it in water for about five to 10 minutes. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow it to stretch so we can get a real tight wrap around this exhaust header. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So some things you can do while your wrap is soaking in the water is go ahead and remove the skid plate and the right foot peg. Uh, with, this mo with my model, I had to remove the uh, Camel ADV foot peg brace and of course the skid plate. You could remove the entire hanger for the, um, for the right foot peg, but it might be more pain than what it's worth. This exhaust is kind of a, it kind of blocks that a little bit and to remove the whole thing just to remove this is a little bit more work than I want to do right now. So I think I can feed it through while I wrap it around. Another thing you might want to do too is just kind of measure how long a piece of pipe you have. And we're gonna have about a quarter to a half inch of, of overlap on each side. So you could kind of technically measure about how many wraps you would need. I'm just gonna pull off about 25 feet. It's gonna be more than enough. And I'll just feed that through as I, as I wrap just to ensure that I have enough. One area that it's gonna be a little bit difficult is where you have these two pipes coming into one and then you have your springs that hold this together here on this Acropovic exhaust. It's just one thing that you'll have to kind of be aware of as you wrap around. On the factory, I believe this is all one smooth piece and you have your um, O2 sensor there, which I do not run right now but since I have the uh, some aftermarket goodies on there. But that being said, um, we'll probably wrap one pipe first and then wrap them together and go all the way to the end. Another thing you can want to do while this is soaking in the water is just take some soapy water and kind of clean your pipe off. Make sure there's no dirt, dust, oil, anything like that. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I've just got some soapy water in this spray bottle. So I'll go ahead and wipe that down and then we'll start getting ready to wrap it up. Okay, so I've pulled off about 25 feet or so. And once you trim it, one thing you're going to want to do, if I can get this to focus, there we go is you're gonna to wanna to wrap the end with either like duct tape or electrical tape, because as you wrap this around the pipe every time, a little bit will start to fray and fray and fray, and then you'll eventually end up with about 12, 10 to 12 inches of frayed um, wrap at the end. And if you're getting kind of close to being, uh, not having enough, then that could be a problem to where, you know, you just get towards the end and you don't have enough and all you have is the frayed stuff. So go ahead and wrap it, that way you get uh, as much out of it as you can. This is gonna make a little bit of a mess just mainly because it, it is soaking in water. But again, the whole point is to get it nice and tight as you wrap it around. And it, it just takes a lot of time and patience. I'm not gonna video the entire process. Um, I just I'll stop in sections and just kind of show you my progress. The kit comes with these stainless steel zip ties and these are pretty dang nice. Another option that you might wanna use would be just some uh, stainless steel safety wire. The stainless steel safety wire is nice because it's a lot thinner. I mean, these are fairly wide, right? And they will show, but um, 
if you don't care about that, then whatever. But you'll, you'll definitely want to use one of these to hold the beginning and the end and maybe a couple in between where there's a couple of bends just to hold everything nice and snug. For this first piece, you're going to want to start with it folded over and you want to trim all these little fray pieces off and you'll make one good wrap. And then your first couple of wraps, there be there will be a little bit more overlap. But then as you go, you can do you know anywhere from half to three quarters of the way of wrap. That way you're not um, wasting too much. And you can see this stuff does kind of start to fray fairly quick. It's a little bit frustrating as you go, but again, just go slow and be patient with it. All right, so I've got it all done. Um, didn't take me too long, maybe half hour or so. Uh, again, just take your time and really go slow with it and kind of methodical with it, just to make sure you get a solid, tight wrap. You wanna keep that tension tight the entire time as you as you wrap it. And also, you have to make sure and get it wet. It really makes sure, it really allows it to stretch as you go around little nooks and crevices and all this other stuff. So um, I do have it um, tied up here and I have it tied back here. Um, one thing about these stainless steel zip ties, and I had heard other people say this in the past too, they're pretty shitty. So I'm going to go back with some stainless steel safety wire and safety wire on both sides of that just to make sure it stays tight. And I'll probably throw a couple in, uh, in here as well, just to make sure the whole wrap stays tight. But again, the whole point of this isn't really aesthetic. It's more to keep the heat off of your, your boot when you're riding and slow technical stuff, especially on the hotter days. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together and um, yeah, I'll just kind of show you how it looks, but it was a fairly easy modification to, to do this, to, to make it where it's going to definitely save uh, a little bit of discomfort while you're doing that slow technical writing. So here's just a closer look from what I did here. Just went around this header first, tied it off and then wrapped both headers. And then as I went through, I just left space for these, uh, these spring connectors to be able to put back on there. But yeah, I think it turned out okay. I mean, not the prettiest job, but uh, once it's all said and done, it'll definitely keep the heat down and keep the heat coming from off of the, on the motor and on my feet and out the exhaust instead. So pretty excited about it. Again, not one of those things that you absolutely have to do, but when your boot is sitting right here by this, this header pipe and there's no heat shield or any kind of protection, you, you definitely notice it. So. I'm excited to get it out and try it out. And I think it just looks pretty badass, I must say. All right, so I got my safety wire. I got my safety wire pliers here. I'm gonna go ahead and do, like I said, a few different areas just to tighten it down. I don't know if you've ever seen, if you've ever used safety wire pliers, but you take some stainless steel wire and you have these, um, these we'll call them special pliers. But basically what it does is once you grab onto the wire, you can lock them down with this and it holds it tight. And then as you pull this, here, let me see if I can't do a little demonstration. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna take this washer here with a little bit of stainless steel wire and I'll just show you how it works really quick. You basically just grab it with the pliers, push this down, it locks, so now they're locked in. And then it has this little spiraled mechanism on the back. So then literally all you do is you just, better angle here, is you just pull it and it twists the wire up. So just pulling it down and it twists. And you would think, oh, it's untwisting every time, but it's not. So it kind of creates, if I get it to focus, Kind of creates this nice twisted line, right? It makes it nice and strong. And again, going around something small like this or something fatter like that, it's gonna, it, it just makes it nice and tight. So it's really convenient and it's not gonna go anywhere once you get it on there. Then you just basically release it and it's got cutters and you can just cut the excess off like that. It is not the thickest wire, so it can break if you get it too tight like that. So you don't want to get it real tight. 
but get it tight enough to where it's just gonna hold. So <laughs> safety wire, the, the kind that I bought that came with this kit because I lost my other pair of pliers isn't very good. Um, at least around this fatter section here, it keeps snapping. So I do have just some regular, um, some baling wire and it's black. It probably won't stay black. It will eventually rust, but it blends in nice here. So not that big a deal. It's quite a bit thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that for now, just to hold it in place. And again, this is all just to kind of make sure that it doesn't move on me or come on, come on uh, raveled. One of those things, again, not hard, just a little bit time consuming. All right, that's it. The black wire actually blends in really well. You can barely see it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that zip tie on just as like a backup just in case, but go ahead and throw the skid plate on and be back in business. Alrighty, so got the Outback skid plate back on and the camel brace for the foot peg as well as the foot peg. Everything's all buttoned up and tight. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I was a little bit weary about the color of it, but um, I think it matches the titanium exhaust really well and uh, the, the engine cover and all that. So yeah, not too bad. This will smoke a little bit whenever you first start it up, just mainly because there's a little bit of wax inside of the uh, fabric that's in there. So that's gonna make a little bit of smoke whenever you start it up and it does start to get hot, that will go away. That smoke's not toxic or any of that kind of stuff. So just be aware of that. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around through this whole video. Uh, this is re a really short one, and I know that this doesn't really apply to everybody, but really, I mean, even when I had the bike stock, I could always feel a little bit of heat coming off that exhaust pipe right there along the, the skid plate. Um, so it, it does help even if you don't have an aftermarket exhaust to wrap this thing up. Um, and like, again, the, the most I noticed it was when I was doing really slow speed where there wasn't a lot of airflow and I would get to camp at night and like, man, my right foot is so much more sweaty than my left foot. And I, I'm really hoping that this kind of helps that out a little bit. Cause you know, it, it is just, does just get a little bit distracting whenever, you know, you're riding and it's, you just have that, you know, thousand degree heat right there on your, on your foot. But um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And again, thanks for hanging around to the end here. And if you have any questions about this process, definitely hit me in the comments below. If you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, and check out this t-shirt. We got our new Backcountry Adventure Motorsports t-shirts. Um, you can check them out through the Teespring, Teespring link down below. And hopefully here pretty soon, my website will be launched and we can have these on the website as well for purchase. But if you wanna support the channel, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, everything that comes in through either Teespring or any of your donations through PayPal goes directly into a separate account and goes all 100% back into this channel uh, to help bring gear reviews and anything like that that you guys want to see on this channel. So uh, hit me in the comments below for things that you would like to see in the future, as well as uh, make sure and hit that donation button if you're interested in that, or there is also a link down below for Teespring or the donation button. Um, and once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this and that bell icon so you get notified when they are released. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.